What is up, guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. I'm John the Potter, drinking coffee out of a mug from Small Town Clay. Very, very excited. Look at that! Oh, she made me a Minnesota mug! That's so awesome! A little tumbler. That is gorgeous. Love that clay. Thanks, Miranda. Appreciate it. So I just got this from Miranda at Small Town Clay. How are you doing? So happy you're in my studio today. We have a completely full glaze kiln in there. We're gonna unload it right now. To show you what we got. So interesting thing about this glaze kiln is, so I have this clay, this dark iron stoneware that I've been using, and I really like the look of it, super cool, but it was starting to get these little bubbles, right? which I'm dumb, I should use witness cones so I know exactly how hot each shelf is. But then I looked at the vitrification uh, range of the dark iron stoneware and it topped out at cone six. So if it goes above cone six, then it's actually getting over vitrified. And then having those little bubbles in there, I broke one of the pieces that had the bubble in there. So I decided that I would fire that dark iron stoneware because I had a ton of bisque pieces actually to cone five instead of to cone six. So this kiln is actually fired to cone five and not cone six. But before we get started, I want to say shout out to the sponsor of this video, Mako. Makoproducts.com slash John the Potter. Head there and check them out. They're super cool. Pretty much all the glazes in there are from them. They make great stoneware glazes. Um, they're, they're sending me some other products. Also, thanks to shout out to Small Town Clay for this beautiful mug that I'm drinking out of this morning. This Minnesota on it. How cool is that? All right, without further ado, sorry for all the kill unloadings, but I've just like gone crazy in the studio and basically all I do is just make pottery in here. It's so awesome. Woo! Let's do it. Oh, this kiln is still kind of hot. Okay, so this, so I made, I was gonna make these like clay stepping stones, right? Well, in the bisque, it completely broke, but it broke in such a clean fashion that EC was like, oh, you should still fire it. And maybe it would like, you could set it up in like, so here I'll show you. So there's one piece. See that? Who knows? We'll see what happens. But the clay stepping stone idea might have been a better idea up here than it was in reality. We shall see. We shall see. So yeah, cone five instead of cone six. I haven't done that probably ever. The dark iron stoneware is pretty nice. Ooh, look at this bowl, sandstone bowl. That sandstone at cone five is really cool. Oh, and it sits perfectly flat. Yes. So nice. Last firing I had some stuff come out that was not so good. Oh, these are cool. So we got, whew, starting to get some Mocha monkey. There we go. Look at that. So that's sapphire and winter wood. Love it. Love it. Couple mocha monkey custom ones. Like, how cool is that mug from Small Town Clay? Go check her out. Small Town Clay on Instagram at Small Town Clay. A couple things. So I made all these in the dark iron stoneware, which I knew that I didn't want to fire to cone six because it was getting a little over vitrified. The other thing that I changed was on this glaze, I was starting to get a little bit of pinholes happening. And so I did some research on pinholes and found that sometimes if you bisque to a little bit higher temperature, it solves your pinhole issue, which so far it seems like, so I, probably did something you're really not supposed to do, but I changed a bunch of variables in this kiln. But so far it's solved all the problems. But these are little mugs for um, my parents' cabin. They didn't, they kind of asked, they asked me a lot for a lot of pottery, but, but they often have large groups of people up at their cabin and then everybody's drinking coffee and then like 
all the mugs kind of look the same and so then no one remembers where their coffee is and so we made a set that go together that are all kind of the same size but all have little differences. So there's like a lot of little carving things and then they each have like a little symbol. So like this has like a fish right there. This one has a sun, so EC did that. This one has a wave. So they all kind of go together, but they also have like differences too. What was I gonna say? I was just gonna say something that was really important. Sweet, sweet. They will be, they're gonna be pumped. That didn't really work. So this is the Norse blue with blue surf on top. It's got a giant hole in it, so I thought I'd put a little, little plant in there, and then there's some more planters. That, ah, oh, that, those turned out great. This dark iron stoneware, just as I expected, cone five, crushed it. I'm very, I'm very, very happy, very happy with this. It didn't quite blend quite as much, like between there. Did I show you all these? I can't remember. It didn't quite, like if you look at some of these, it looks, here, can you tell the difference? This is at cone six, this is at cone five. So I feel like the blending here is a little bit more at cone six. I feel like it just is a little bit more runny, but I really, I think they both look super good. And a bunch of little altering things. So yeah, this will be fun and no pinholes. Did it? Did the biscuit cone 04 solve the pinhole issue? I don't know, maybe. Who really knows, it's a mystery. Ups and downs, ups and downs of pottery. Oh, what the heck was I gonna say? It was really something interesting. Here, I think I can kind of tell. So this is, is this sandstone? A sandstone on top of Norse blue. Yeah, so Norse blue on the bottom, sandstone on the top. There's two of those. I'll let you check those out for a second. And that, I feel like the Norse blue turns slightly a different color. It's kind of cool. See, now I'm like, what would this look like at cone six? See, and this is on the B clay. So B clay also has a vitrification um, range of like cone five to 10 or something. So many variables in clay. There's that mocha monkey. Okay, dark iron stoneware is good at cone five. Okay, I gotta move some of this stuff. There's mocha monkey in the sandstone, holy. I'm so hot. Everything coming out of here is like 100 and some degrees, so. And then, Mocha Monkey with sandstone. And then there's a Minnesota mug in sandstone. That's on the B clay, so it's very like, very bright. Super nice though, wow. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, those are nifty. They are, they're nifty gifties. There you go, there's a blue surf with sandstone underneath. Same with that one, with a little carving in it. It's coming out really well. I do think that I like the cone six look. Just slight, I mean, that's pretty cool. There's another planter. Planter, sandstone planter. I, I really need to start putting witness cones in my kiln. Like, that's, a must for me. Like that, those, that didn't turn out that great, those Mocha Monkey ones. But there's carved, carved Norse blue. Nice, so I think, I don't actually remember because I'm dumb and I don't write anything down, but I'm pretty sure that this is the sandstone underneath Norse blue and this is sandstone on top of Norse blue. So you can kind of see a little bit of the difference. I think I like, like this one better. Very nice. Very nice. It's pretty much the only thing in this kiln that I'm disappointed about is how these turned out. Which I'm, sh I'm I would bet we'll still sell them, but I'm still not super happy with them. Boom, alrighty. I think that is it. All right, friends, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, like, share, comment, tell me what your favorite piece out of this kiln was. And what are you making? How's your pottery going? You making stuff? 
Are you making other stuff? Let me know, hit, hit me up in the comments. I read them all, even though I don't respond to many of them. I read them all. All right, that's it for this video. Shout out to the sponsor, Mako. Mako Colors makes this glaze, this glaze, this glaze, this glaze. Literally every glaze in this kiln, Mako made it. So, all right, that's it. We'll see you in the next one.